Sorry, I'm trying to get an angle here to make this video. And uh, I'm in the only shady spot, or the best shady spot I could find. Um, I couldn't make it down to the river. I was going to go down and relax. So I had to come back up to the rock flat where I actually I camped out. I'm actually sitting where my, fi my uh, fire pit was. And uh, I just made a video. I found this sling here on the trail. I, and it's back there. I mean, I, I don't know who would have lost it or who would have been carrying it. Um, I carry sling too. It's just for fun. I, I, I can't actually use a sling all that great. I mean, I wouldn't try to hunt or, you know, try to risk my life, you know, or bet my life on one. But um, I wanted to go over some gear that I have that uh, I've had for a long time, um, seven years or better on some of it. Um, back before I moved down from Washington, I assembled a bushcraft kit slash survival kit because um, I did not I knew I did not know the terrain I did a bunch of research on you know eastern woodlands let's say let's call it and I figured out what I probably need and I'm still using it first one is a military poncho now this is not a military surplus poncho it's like a Rothko or, or some other. It's not an Miltech, but it's it's a it's a good poncho. It's not the best, but it's it's a good poncho. Um, a lot better than you know a lot of the ones you buy at Walmart. It's got the grommets. I've set up as a lean-to and all that all that stuff. I've never camped under it, but um, it's a good poncho. Um, this whole thing, I love this kit. It's a butt pack, canteen. And the GI belt, pistol belt. I got rid of the Y suspenders because um, I did a lot of exploring and I had a rib that started popping out. So this kit just rides on my belt, just or on around my waist. No, no, no strap, no nothing. Um, and it's fairly comfortable. So the the GI canteen kit, um, I have the upgraded Nalgene bottle, but uh, I have the cook kit um, and stove, the cup and stove. Um, you can see that wire bit that I've added on there. That just that just helps the keeps the cup from falling down inside of it and gives that chamber, the stove chamber itself, a little bit more room and it lets it almost get like a rocket uh, stove effect. Um, I had a piece of tin foil with it that I used as a uh, lid. But I turned it into a bowl so I could share water with my dog. Um, where'd that go? Oh, here we are. My more clipper. I've had this for a long time. I love this knife. Um, I thought it was actually the only one I had with me, but then I found that I had a uh, Condor Bushlorn in the bottom of, of the butt pack that I forgot about. But um, this this knife is is absolutely great. Uh, the only modification I made was I put a hole in it so I could put a, put a piece of paracord on it and wear it as a neck knife, which the paracord is long enough to, be, to use as a bowstring. I actually used this very piece on one of my survival bow videos, and I filed the back down so it'll throw a spark off of a ferro rod, and then I just keep a ferro rod on it, which that's another piece of gear that I really like, are ferro rods. Any shape or form, ferro rods are great. Um, Altoids tins, great piece of gear, just as a container. Make kits out of them. Um, for this one's a first aid kit. Uh, I've got a whole mess of stuff in there. Um, Baco Laplander. This is a really good piece of kit. Saves you a lot of trouble. Um, processed a lot of firewood, and I've also um, used this to make a lot of bows. Cotton cloth. Um, you will notice that some of this is the, in the five C's, ten C's, you know, whatever. Um, it's a system; it works. I, I love K Dave Canterbury. He's, you know, he's he's great. He's uh, given a lot to the bushcraft survival, um, you know, communities. But cotton cloth, a lot of purposes. This happens to be bandana. Um, I also carry a schmog a lot of the times. Um, my uh, my my pocket fishing kit. I really like just having having a fishing kit handy. Uh, this is a Gerber Gator folding knife. This is a really nice knife. Um, 
no, it's, it's not a survival knife, but it's, it's, a, it's a knife. It'll skin a deer. It'll clean fish. I've, I've done all different kinds of stuff with it. I'm a big fan of Cliff Bars. I suffer from uh, low blood sugar, like hypoglycemia, and um, I don't like outright pass out, but I start feeling really sick sometimes, and all I need is a sugar boost. Um, something like protein in it, peanuts work really, really well. Um, let's see what else I got down in here. Paracord, great for building shelters, bowstrings. Um, you can, you know, pull the, the inner strands out and make fishing line out of. Um, my World War II compass, that's a great piece of gear. Um, goes along with fire, you know, any fire kit. This and a, and a uh, this and a ferro rod. This is actually a burner I carry in the little side pocket on my GI canteen, or I can even put it in the bottom. But it's just alpha, or um, it's uh, waxed like melted candle wax uh, that I've let a cotton ball soak up. That'll burn. I can get several. You know, I can take it out in pieces and burn it that way as a fire starter, or I can. Um, just take the whole thing and put it in my, my canteen stove, and uh, I can get like three boils, boils out of that. So I can make like three meals, you know, with that. Or just use it to get a stubborn fire going. Um, that is probably it except for leather gloves. I've actually had these gloves for like six or seven years. I bought them before I ever moved down from Washington along with the rest of this kit. Um, I only use them when I go out in the woods. So I only get out in the woods maybe twice a month. And sometimes I don't even wear the gloves. Um, I think I've worn them as winter gloves more than anything. Uh, anyways, that's some of my favorite gear. Gear that I keep going back to in no particular order or importance. So, uh, that's my list. Everyone has a different one. I'll see you next time.